It's a beautiful day here in Hillsborough, New Brunswick, and one of the gems, the hidden gems of our community is the New Brunswick Railway Museum. As we think about these rail cars that are uh, displayed here and it's so well taken care of by the uh, society that uh, looks after them, I uh, just want to say thank you for providing this for our community, for our region, uh, as a way to remember the history um, of really of our province and how people traveled uh, in days gone by. And not the trains don't still exist, but uh, they don't travel in the same way. And that pioneering spirit, that spirit of, of going out and, and laying down new track and, and going places that never been before is something that's genuinely new in this season. Uh, you know, we often get used to how things are. And thanks to COVID, of course, things are changing rapidly and we're seeing constant change. And uh, to a certain extent, as we know, uh, the church has been what I would call scattered as a result of uh, the COVID epidemic. People aren't allowed to gather in every building and every meeting they're used to. Uh, we can't even go to restaurants in the same way we used to. And that, this stuff is challenging for many of us. And yet there's a, a wonderful story in the Bible that talks about a time when the church was scattered and how God used it for powerful effect. And it's found in the book of Acts in chapter eight. And uh, the cause of the scattering was different than a pandemic, but nevertheless, the scattering was real. What had happened, as Pastor Chad talked about just last week, was that a man named Stephen had been teaching the truth about who Jesus Christ was and what he had done. And uh, Stephen was killed, was stoned to death by the crowd that gathered. And there was a man named Saul that was looking on and giving approval in that moment. Saul was uh, serving the Pharisee, Pharisees of the day, the leadership of the day in the Jewish church, uh, synagogue rather, and they were opposed to this new movement called the Way. And Chad talked about that so well last week. But just like these trains took people near and far and scattered them across the land, allowed them to visit people, allowed them to go to new places and, and to settle in new places. In the same way, when this kind of problem happened, what the response of the church was, was, was fear, of course, as you might expect. Someone had been killed that was one of their leaders. And uh, as the persecution then increased, the early church ran for their lives. They were scattered throughout what was known as the Roman Empire at the time. And you find the story in Acts chapter 8. A marvelous moment in the story. And uh, I want to read it to you here, just starting at verse 1, Acts chapter 8 and verse 1. It says, Saul approved of his execution. That would be the execution of Stephen. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So everybody except the leadership had to run for their lives. The apostles somehow managed to stay. They maybe had some influence. They had some people that uh, they'd uh, earned favor with. But the ordinary Christians, the ordinary followers of Jesus, had no choice but to run for their lives. It says, devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him. But Saul, it says, was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. I wonder what we would do in this day and age if that happened to us. How would we respond? You know, I think the pandemic has caused us to ask similar questions. How will we respond as God's people in the midst of this time? At a time when we haven't been allowed to do all the things we normally do, our Sunday morning services, our children's programs, our youth programs, our seniors programs, our pickleball games, all the things we love to do. We haven't been allowed to have a potluck in six months. And I wonder if we've understood that just as in those days when the church is scattered, it's actually an opportunity for the church to become even more effective at doing the job, the mission that God gave us, which is to go and to make disciples. I know I've talked before in our midweek messages about uh, how over the doors of our church it says you are now entering the mission field. Well, for almost six months, we've been forced to stay out in the mission field. We haven't been allowed to come into our building and says this is what happened after the church was scattered as we continue in, in chapter 8. It says those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Not just the pastors, the preachers, the teachers. Everybody that was part of the church went out and told others about the good news about Jesus. It says Philip specifically went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ, Jesus Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. 
For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them, and many were paralyzed or lame, who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. My friends, I just want to ask this question. You know, we're so close uh, to seeing uh, the opportunity to regather. The, the church here at Hillsborough Baptist Church, we're looking forward to being able to be back in our building in just a couple weeks. But I want to ask the question, as we've been scattered, have we seen and taken the opportunity to continue to share Jesus with other people? Have we seen uh, in this moment the opportunity we've been given? Just like the people in many years gone by had the chance to get on a train and travel to another part of the country and see things and see people and, and, and settle in new places. Uh, do we see the opportunity for us as God's people, the church, perhaps to do something new? as we've been scattered, to see this as an opportunity to share in ways we never shared before. The hope that we have in such a way that in the community, the cities where we find ourselves, there would be joy. My friends, it's good news we've been offered. And just like these rail cars represent something, so our church building represents something. It represents the place where we love to come together and be together in fellowship. But let's not mistake the opportunity we have the purpose of a train is to take you somewhere. The purpose of the church building is to be a gathering place from which we are sent out, scattered, if you will, in order to share the good news about Jesus Christ more effectively with more people. My friends, I'm looking forward to what the next chapter looks like. I'm looking forward to seeing many of you in the flesh again. I'm looking forward to continue to connect with many people online through the internet and, and all the videos and other ways we're doing with Zoom. But most of all, I'm looking forward to seeing what God will do in this season. If we as his people will not only be scattered, but embrace the scattering and choose to share the good news about Jesus. It's the best news ever. It's the greatest story ever told. And just like there's amazing stories about the railroad, how it was formed, how it was built, how it was used, there are amazing stories in God's word. But what he's done, what he's doing in our lives today, and what he's going to do, I'm personally looking forward to seeing what God can do in this next chapter of our lives. As we've been scattered, as we get the chance to share, as we come back together, let's not forget what the mission truly is to go and make disciples, to baptize them and teach them to obey everything He commanded us to do in the name of Jesus. That's good news. Have a blessed day.